Weekend kickoff is back. Brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems. It is the Ohio State spring game, and we are here at the Fairway Columbus hanging out with Bobby Carpenter, Bradley Robinson, Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward, and it's just spring fever. Bob, earlier in the week, I wasn't quite there yet. But now, get a little closer to the game, get a little bit more juice flowing. Now I'm ready for some football. Well, you get a taste of what that weather's going to be like on Saturday. You're really excited about that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, you get the coaches' clinic behind you. All that stuff is is very enjoyable. Now you're here to the, you know what is essentially. I think we talked about it at the live show at Roosters is you know maybe the celebration of spring. This is what it is. It's a coronation really of what your team's going to look like. At least most of the team, probably about 80 85 90 percent some isn't some aren't here yet some will be entering the portal but the core of your team you're going to know a lot about what they are here on Saturday afternoon Wait, you just you have to throw a little that's the bad weather that's raining on the parade with portal talk already Bob uh, everyone loves portal talk Austin <laughs> Brad you love the portal or you love uh, the spring game uh, I love the spring game uh, we've had some good weather the past couple of years and it looks like it's going to be the same. I enjoy springtime in Ohio because that means I can get out on the golf course, um, <laughs> especially I have a little bit more free time now, but I enjoy spring and the spring game is going to be interesting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's always interesting because it always seems to be like one or two players that has this amazing spring game and it's not just at Ohio State. I think it happens a lot of schools and the entire hype goes all summer long and then <laughs> nothing ever happens. So it always someone happens. There, it's like, oh, this guy, this is his year. He did this in the spring game, and then it just never becomes anything. So it'll be interesting to see if there's someone that breaks that trend this year or keeps going. Your spring game all-stars? Berm, who's no, your yeah. favorite spring game all-star? It goes back and forth between Bam Childress yes. and uh, Torian Washington, who was also a big-time yeah. uh, spring game guy. It's how we, – we know what Bobby's most, like, hated spring game was, which was 2004. Because uh, it was uh, – It was, it was the, like 37 degrees and, and rain. sideways rain and snow. It was awful. Not much snow, just a lot of rain. Uh, I was snow would have been better. I was in the crowd. <laughs> I was in the crowd there as a fan watching with my brother. What was your best spring game memory and your least favorite spring game memory, Brad? I mean – There's sp- like seven thing. of them. Sp- yeah. <laughs> spring games are uh, very interesting from a specialist perspective. Yeah. I guess best would probably be uh, the one when Drew proposed. Yeah. Um, mm. Just because that was a cool memory. But for me, spring games actually the easiest thing I'll do in terms of something in that stadium because it's the only time I – it's scripted exactly when I'm going to go on the field. Yeah. <laughs> I know usually <laughs> going in I'd have, all right, we're doing three or four punts today. Like they'll happen after this happens and that. So it's – and then usually you finish that and you're like, well, I'm done for the day and just get to watch football. So Did you feel like you failed as a man because you never proposed to someone on the field at Ohio Stadium? <sighs> There's still time. <laughs> if he's America, you think he's not, not as a allowed player, to? But, yeah. Ameri- he can do it. You can just walk in there. If, if yeah. there's any lucky lady, are you? Are you single? I'm single. I'm single. Any lucky <laughs> ladies out there? Brad Robinson's looking to propose to somebody at Ohio Stadium this weekend. <laughs> oh, this, so that's quick. Chop chop. That's quick. That's a rapid turnaround. Bob, I was trying to th- think. Aside from you dealing with those wintry conditions there in 2004. Didn't you almost famously, or didn't you also famously read a newspaper on the sideline of a spring that game? Was, that was during a, a Jersey scrimmage. Oh, a Jersey trust. scrimmage. Yes. We trust we had a lot of different spring carnival events. <laughs> uh, we had the spring game, which was an actual game, four quarters, 15 minutes apiece, timed out like a normal game, which would take three and a half to four hours. And so there were years where you get sunburnt. Um, I missed my first spring game because I had a shattered eye socket. Uh, How'd my, that happen? Uh, that's, well... <laughs> We can get into that with Schlegs. Side nuggets with Schlegs. Um, it, that happened like the, after the Jersey scrimmage my freshman year. Uh, so that was not a great thing. My sophomore year, I think the weather was nice. And then that 04 season was just, it was a, abysmal on the multiple levels. So it was absolutely freezing cold and terrible. We had a big party planned afterwards. It was going to be a lot of fun. And then unfortunately, that fun never materialized because you know, you're drinking in a house and celebrating the end of time. And what you're going to have, we used to be on quarters, so like you had all of May, and May was a great month, and you get to really enjoy yourself. Now these guys are done. They wrap up like the last week of class, they have finals, so there's nothing really to look forward to outside of just kind of being done with school and the training element of it, but we would have the jersey scrimmage where you get to battle to see who got to wear the reds or the whites, and I preferred the whites anyways, and Trust would slant that so heavily in favor of the offense, and then I think pay off the officials. But where Bradley would have really <laughs> How shined. How did it go? Oh, it went very deep. That was the year that I I took I got kicked out, and so did AJ for I mean calling out blatant holdings and things that were letting happen as if they I mean it, it was awful. 
It was like the fix was in. Hey, wait, you got kicked out of kicked a spring out game? of a spring game. It was a Jersey scrimmage. That's why I was reading the newspaper. Oh, the newspaper one. And I, okay. I maybe took my shoulder pads off because it was a nice day, and I was going to get a tan. Do you maybe tan? I, I can a little bit. It takes some work. I'm a high effort tanner, you know. So it takes some time. I can't just go out and like my kids and wife. Two of them, and my wife can really brown up. But we had a thing called the kick scrimmage, where every Ooh. play was a special teams play. Yes. So we started off with a kickoff, and then if you didn't run it back. Get or punt. get in field goal range, you would punt. <laughs> and then if they didn't run it back or get in field goal range, they would punt. And you would do this back and forth until there was some level of scoring, which usually would be someone, they would be so tired on the return team that someone would give up, or on the cover team that someone would give up a, a big kick, and that's how it would happen. And yes, that seems that, like a cheat code if you got Ted Ginn out there. Yeah. And I mean, really, just anybody who can, has a high level of endurance, because that's a lot of running. And it would be exhausting. And he would always say, oh, you know, it's going to be 45 minutes. It would be longer than an hour. And that's a lot of running. We'd sub guys through, but gosh, it was awful. It was 40, 45 yards sprints followed by an open field tackle. It was straight up live. There was no tag offs. <laughs> this was live. Like, go block a punt. I mean, that was real. Like, you could block. That's the other option. Yeah. Block one for a touchdown. Brad, do you feel like you played in the wrong era? No, I'm fine with what, what I did. <laughs> I like my like he, four to it was five. Like, hey, he played game. in multiple areas. I like, like, I like about. three snaps every weekend. That was yeah. fine for me. It was kind of like the blue oyster call, don't fear the Reaper cowbell of specialists. <laughs> like last time I checked, we don't have a whole lot of games that feature the special teams. Yeah. That game was only special teams. So you'd be doing yourself a disservice and every member of this team if you didn't perform the hell out of it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe for the last 14 or 15 games, Ohio State special teams would have been better off with one of those – Jersey Get a lot of reps in. in. There's a lot of practice. Get the reps in. But that's, we don't need to go back. You're never, that you're never going to skip a punt back to a guy <laughs> who wasn't ready for it. I promise you that. <laughs> Drill that, it. That was not going to happen. Hey, well, there's more reps available on Saturday in Ohio State's spring game. So, uh, Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems getting us ready for that. We went in to spring camp, obviously all with questions that we wanted to answer. Quarterback, offensive line, linebackers, what's going to happen? Brad, have you felt like uh, – Whatever biggest question you had for this team has been answered at this point, or is it still lingering out there heading into Saturday? I think my question still is going to be O-line, and I think that actually can get answered. Everyone's going to want to see the quarterbacks, uh, but the quarterbacks won't be able to do anything if the O-line can't do anything, especially with the talent on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so I think if the quarterbacks do have any type of game, then we'll know the O-line did well. And if there's not much going on with the quarterbacks, then we know it's probably more the O-line and they just didn't have the time or ability to get the ball off and really show what they can do. Do you? What have you made about the back and forth? Josh Fryer could play guard. He could be right tackle. Tegra's, at, Tegra's doing some tackle. Maybe Carson Hinsman or Seth McLaughlin could play guard. Like, Do you, do you think that that needs to be resolved anytime soon, or can that carry over to August? I think it should be resolved soon just so that they go into fall camp with a set role and they can spend those three to four weeks really working. I mean, maybe you can resolve it over the summer. I don't know how you do that with individual drills and shorts and a T-shirt a couple days a week. But I think the sooner you get that resolved and the more you can get a concrete look in fall camp, then you're not delaying any other issues, especially because, like I just said, if the O-line's not set, the quarterbacks aren't going to be able to basically compete and figure out who's going to be the guy there. So I think the sooner the better. Berm? Uh, my biggest concern was the right side of the offensive line, and I, I think I think we've got it sort of figured out. I, uh, you know, there is still this got some options. There's still this conversation about maybe Tegra Shabola is good enough to force you to play him at right tackle and move Josh Fryer into guard and let Luke Montgomery develop a little bit longer. I mean, there's an argument to be made for that. I guess Tegra's in his third year, Luke's in his second. If, if that matters, I mean, obviously there's. Uh, going to be a, a ups and downs for each of these guys who haven't really played. I've heard really good things about Luke Montgomery at times this spring, and I've heard times where it's like, eh, he didn't have a great day. I've heard the same about Tegra Shabola. The question is, what's going to be best for this team come September? And I don't know that we have the full answer yet, but I think that there is that the Buckeyes are way closer to that. And I, I, I still think it'll be Josh Fryer at right tackle and Luke Montgomery at right guard, but I've Tegra Shabola is making it interesting. So I'm really – Really anxious to see his reps against Kenyatta Jackson and Caden Curry and Mitchell Melton on Saturday. Um, however, those break down. I think that th that's going to be really telling as far as where maybe things are trending. Bob, what did you go into spring with your biggest question? Biggest question. I mean, I'm not like Berm, just wake me up when September ends, you know, 
waiting to see what happens. Uh, I would look at he this. He does want to fast forward through all of the first five games. That's true. He does. Tower's going to be I would look, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to embrace it. What an opportunity. What else are you going to do, Berm? See a bunch of young players getting better. Roam the high school parking lots looking for dudes that can play football, maybe. (laughs) You got to do what you got to do, Bob. Uh, I guess for, you know, everyone's looking at the offensive line and the quarterback. Looking at it for me, you know, I'll take the defensive side of it. You've got guys who have played a lot, and then you've got some guys who are inexperienced or maybe played a lot of other positions. You mentioned, you know, we talked about Sonny Styles, you know, throughout the entirety of the spring. Would he be able to transition to linebacker? What does that look like? Can C.J. Hicks take that next step? You know, Cody Simon, I think, is pretty established. You know, and thankfully, this is why you need multiple players. Cody Simon probably played close to as many reps, reps as Tommy or Steele last year, you know, filling in for both of those guys. And he's smart. He can do it both. And you're getting some of that same thing happening with Lathan Ransom not really practicing and playing much this spring, developing those young safeties. Those two guys are stalwarts. Now, how can you, how can you get Sonny Styles in the mix? How's it going to be with C.J. Hicks? They'll do a little three linebacker stuff. They're going to do some two linebacker stuff. You know, you don't want to take Jordan Hancock off the field. Should he get, you know, someone get hurt? Could he play safety? Lorenzo Styles, Sonny's brother, I think has looked really good. So like, those are some of the questions of just building depth and really position flexibility within some of the players. Because any great defense, if you're going to be really good, in my opinion, in today's game, you have to have guys that can do multiple things. And when you have that, it creates uncertainty in the offense and what they're looking at. So, What's your guess about how that would work, Bob? I mean, I know that it's April, and they can that's way down the road. Probably be, maybe could be week to week with game plan changing up and team-specific stuff, but we've seen opportunities where C.J. Hicks and Sonny Styles and Cody Simon could all be out there together, yeah. and maybe Jordan Hancock won't play every single snap the way I want him to. How, how do you mix and match and piece that together? What, what do you think it will look like? Um, I would envision... Probably the time you'd have three linebackers on the field next season, 25%. Okay. Maybe some short. There will be teams where it's probably 50 or 60, uh, depending on you know what Michigan does. And I'd have to – look. they play Wisconsin next year? And they went to the more of the dairy, you know, the dairy raid. You got Iowa coming. You got Iowa, so that's a three-linebacker game and a low-scoring, boring affair as well. <laughs> for, one, for one of those teams. Yes, for, for one. Well, it will be, yeah, low-scoring for Iowa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But that, those are like three linebacker games, or probably the majority of the game you'll be living in three linebackers. Other games, you know what? It might be 10%, 20%. And then with that, you'll probably rotate C.J. Hicks and Sonny Styles over that second spot a little bit. Maybe, you know, should they develop enough? Can C.J. play both? Could Sonny play both? You rotate uh, Cody Simon out? Because most coaches, and we played, you know, 3-4 in the NFL uh, with this, and they wanted – there are two ins. They wanted three guys for their two outside spots and three guys for the two inside spots, and so you could ro- you could rotate them through. And hopefully, you have guys that can play both. Some might be a little more pigeonholed in, but you need one guy that can at least oscillate back and forth. You're going to play a lot of games, and hopefully, you're not on defense a lot. But that also help keep guys fresh. It'll keep them from getting injured. And then that's like first and second down. And then you get your third down. You can have some exotic packages where hey, we bring in these guys and we do this, and then we have this package for these guys this game. And so. I think when it all breaks down, there'll be a lot of equality in how much they play. It'll just be based upon team, what they like to do, and then honestly kind of what's working and what packages develop. Uh, this is something that the, the fans are wondering about. So let's – I'm going to spend it, speed it to Is this you. inquiring minds? Because – want to know? We know you've seen more practice than anybody. Do you think – That's not true. You see, you've, seen, more, you've seen more coaches, than Ryan Day. The coaches see more <laughs> Okay, than you've seen just below their amount. Of practice, probably the trainers. Too. Do you think that CJ Hicks has made that leap to be able to be in the rotation in those multiple spots, or do you think that it's still a work in progress where it's like it's him and Sonny rotating and Cody's out there, like where they are now, not where they're going to be in September or October, but where they are now as a former NFL linebacker? Do you feel like you've seen enough out of CJ Hicks to eliminate the doubts or the concerns that were? percolating a year ago. No, I think he, he's definitely a guy that you can have on the field. And not that last year, because everyone's like, let's play him, let's do this. And like, I go, CJ's upside is really high. And it's not that he's not a smart player, but he would make some some critical errors at times. And it's just like on the third and eight, you give up a first down. Yeah, you may have got a sack on a third and six that kept you on the field, but then also you gave up something that kept a drive alive. And so like that's, coaches want consistency. They want to have known quantities. And I think CJ is taking a big step this spring 
was cleaning up the bottom end of what it was. And not that it was bad or atrocious, but you knew a lot of what you were getting out of Tommy Steele and Cody. And so that's a, that's a, a nice security blanket. Like maybe those guys didn't have the super high end plays that CJ could give you, but they also wouldn't me- maybe necessarily take a wrong step, miss a coverage a little bit. Not, we're not talking like yeah. massive things here. It's just small stuff, but I think CJ's made enough. He, he's made some big plays. He's a mature kid. He understands things. Being able to play both inside positions, now that's going to be something that I think on third down he could do, first and second. We'll have to see. I haven't seen. I don't, to my eyes, I don't believe that that's been something that's transpiring, but it's not something I think that's out of the realm. He's got a whole summer to work through it, and honestly, he's got, in my opinion, one of the best teachers at the position you're going to have to be able to work with that. Brad, how would you line this defense up? I think kind of just to build off of what Bobby said earlier, if you want to get multiple guys that can do multiple things, one, like think about a matchup game against a team like Michigan that is going to huddle a lot. Yeah. When you don't have time to sub guys off, you feel a lot better going into that if you know you got a guy like CJ or Sonny that can do a little bit more, Jordan, whoever, like, whatever setup of the defense you want. But no matter what that team breaks the huddle with, you have something to counter it. I think it gives you a little bit more confidence going in there from a coaching perspective and play calling. So I think being able to, since we are, I think, so deep, it's just going to come to how are we going to play with that depth. It's probably best to have that versatile player that can do it all so that in a situation like that, you're covered. All right, so I know everyone out there is saying, why are you not talking about the quarterbacks yet? We're going to, right after we take a break in here at Fairway Columbus. This is the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems weekend kickoff. We're back, getting ready for the spring game. Yes, we'll talk about the quarterbacks next. Inspired Design. Ultra Quiet Operation. To you, it's a Bryant Evolution cooling system. To us, it's the ultimate machine. All set. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. All right, welcome back. Second half of the show, and we have to get into it now. What? is going on with the quarterback situation, quarterback battle. It seems like it's been pretty positive for those guys at the top. You'd like to see separation, right, so that you can name a starter. But, Bob, it feels like it hasn't happened this spring, and it's for a better reason than maybe last year. Yeah, I think there's always going to be some inconsistencies. And just like we were talking about C.J. Hicks prior, you know, you have a guy now uh, who's been here, who's played a lot, who comes in, and you're like, and Howard, you're like, okay, he's – played at Kansas State, played a lot. You know what he can do. Can he get better? Sure. Can he work in you know nuances of the offense? Yeah, Ryan Day, I think, is probably the best quarterback coach he's had. Um, so he's going to obviously help him de- develop in that manner as well. But, yeah, now you start looking at the young guys. You start looking at Lincoln Keenholz. You start looking at Julian Sayan. You start looking at Aaron Nolan. Those guys really haven't played a lot of ball. I mean, Link played essentially one game last year where yep. it was a – jailbreak on him every play so i'm not going <laughs> to hold that against him and then you have devin brown who's been here for a while who's played a little more but he's had some injuries and so I, it'll be interesting to see them kind of balance it out i'll tell you this they've all made really nice plays in uh the spring you've also watched them throw some balls like, yeah you know like maybe needs a little bit more of this spacing or that spacing or whatever it is plus there are you gotta think three of the guys are working with these receivers for the first time right so and then you know Devin and Lincoln, there's still some freshmen out there that they really didn't get a chance to work with much. So there's a lot of development that needs to obviously happen. And there's you're trying to jam a lot of reps in to five guys in a rotation, which also makes it difficult. So I don't think you're going to see anything this summer. Obviously, I don't think Ryan wants anything to happen. But there are there are some guys you start to look at like, uh, they're raising a little bit and maybe getting some reps with the ones that maybe you wouldn't have thought would have happened this early on. Mm. You can have a, a, a battle that is – Still has some inconsistency in it, but the play is overall better Good. than it was a yeah. year ago, uh, where a year ago there was inconsistency and the play was overall shaky. So uh, I think that... Like Eddie Money. Right. <laughs> or Michael J. Fox. Um, oh, no. No? That's what we're doing? It's, it's, it's so anyhow, <laughs> the point is, like she's, we don't, we still shaking. don't really know for sure on Saturday exactly he, how he they're going to break this down. that. We don't know how they're going to break this down Saturday. So I hope that they just divide it up and say, this is Will's team, this is Devin's team. And they're actually at. not. It, well, it, damn it. It sounds as if this will be more of the offense-defense type scrimmage. 
I'm, I'm against that. Ones That's and good. ones. No one asked my which, opinion. Which is what Brad has seen and experienced through the end of his era. As Voice they tra- your displeasure, Austin. Transitioned away. I'm Jeremy. That's Austin. Awesome. <laughs> no, Austin needs I to already, voice your displeasure. I already have. I wanted a real game. But yeah, I'm, I want to see those two lead a team and go at it. And, and the best band win. I like it. Brad, what do you want? How much do we take into the fact that Julian Sane got his black stripe off as a freshman quarterback? I don't think you can discount it yeah. offhand. I mean, uh, the kid's really good. Like, I, I don't I don't want to say that Julian Sane could be Ohio State starting quarterback in the fall. But, but you're, you're about just, to. You're just saying. <laughs> but if Julian you preface Sane, it like that, you are saying that it's possible. Because it's unlikely. But I, like he, I got to be careful what I say, he's, Ryan Day. He's good enough to maybe push them. Give him another six months. Like salt and pepper? Like I think he is. I think he's. I think he has the upside to do that. Physically, there is a major leap from Carlsbad, California, to Ohio State. Okay, like everyone's aware of that. That's not a secret. But he spent a couple weeks at Bama and practicing for the, the the Rose Bowl. Like he he already knew he already knew what college football was about when he got to Ohio State. So yeah. uh, the fact that he lost the black stripe this early is telling. But it's also. Like, because it's not something the coaches have to do. It's not like, well, we got to do this today, or he's gonna be he's gonna be mad at us. So uh, portal portal season's coming up, Berm. I'm not sure. It's already here. He's portal. He's portaling. I, I doubt that, but I mean, if if you go out throughout spring ball and you feel like you prove it every day and you know you're not gonna get a shot, I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, th- nothing is sacred anymore. Nothing's sacred. No sacred cows. No, everything's on the table. I think the black stripe. Mar- Removal is significant. I don't think that's a declaration of him being the starter by it's, any stretch. It's sure saying he's done something he's special. Be able to push. There's he's two guys. Be able to there's push two guys who have got their black stripe removed. Like, and this is just you can look at it, and this is common knowledge to anybody. One of the guys has been arguably the best receiver, maybe best player, consistently day in and day out in all of training camp, at least with his high end plays. And Jeremiah Smith, and then the other freshman that got it removed was Julian. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, it's not insignificant. Let's just say that. Brad, answer your question. I think that answers. I mean, I don't think you take it off if there's not a chance for him to push. Take think, it off. That's take true. it off. And I, and I think a, a summer. My wife tells me that all the time. I think uh, a summer <laughs> of development, I think, is the big thing because he is a smaller guy. Uh, I think you got to trust the strength staff not there. That, though. <laughs> I think you got to trust the strength staff and see where he's at come fall camp. But I think it is still more of a two horse race between Will Howard and Devin. And I don't think anything's going to shake out this weekend. Uh, but I think you kind of lean towards those guys because they've been in the big games. And it wouldn't be the worst thing if a young, talented quarterback like Julian well, has a year to develop so more. So here's my question, Bob. And, okay. and fin- fin- whatever you're going to say, say it, and then I'll ask you my question. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, the physical development piece is true because you're talking to a guy, Will Howard, who's like 33 years old. And Julian and built said, like a tight end. And yeah. look, when he walked in on his visit, I thought he was the tight end. I thought he was Bill Casimir. Yeah. Kazmaier. <laughs> Will Kazmaier. No, Bill Kazmaier. He's got his own name. The world's strongest man. The world's strongest man. I thought you meant Dick Kazmaier, like the 1937 no, Heisman. Bill Kazmaier, the Lonnie guy of the world's, world's I can't follow bit. any of this. But I thought he was. I, that's what I thought he was because I'm like, he's so big. And he even jokes. Like, yeah, I, you know, there's no there's no uh, ca- weight room accountability in the portal, is there? Like, we were, we were looking real beefy. <laughs> uh, Will has since lost some pounds. But there is a big physical difference between being, you know, 22, 23 – in 18 years old. And so if the only, the only way that he could start is you have to make sure that the coaching staff and your team feels comfortable with where you're at physically. And it's not that he needs to put on weight. It's just the maturation. So Longer maturation, season now, too. It's longer season. You're going to get hit by Quarter, dudes. And quarterback running game. By dudes. Like, you ever seen what those guys look like in college football? They don't look like they did in high school. They're all bigger, stronger, faster. And so he needs... Meaner. Meaner. He needs somebody that is able to motivate him and inspire him. They have a guy that they brought in who was drinking <laughs> coffee in the basement for the last three hours. They brought him out. I think he's ready. Matt Anthony Schlegel Foley could be the guy. He could be his shadow. There he goes. Here he goes. Right there alongside him. And they just lift weights all summer long and get him in that right body Is mind. that what you want your quarterback to be doing, just though? Just swole. He needs to be able to withstand – Coach, if you can't get hit by a car in this parking lot and get up and throw a football, you can't play quarterback in college football. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. 
So here's here, I'll let you. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let Jack Sawyer. I'm gonna just have you walk around. I don't need and then, so I'm, get, I'm not trying I'm to be a quarterback. You, and Jack, I'll give him like the thumbs up, and he'll just hit you in the back as hard as Bob, he can. You played it. <sighs> you played a hundred years in the NFL. You can hit me right now. It'd be the same thing. I don't need it. Okay. Okay. I already but know you that it's got to be able to withstand it. I don't have to be able not to do you it. per se, but. The, the royal you, the royal oh, royal you. Okay. So here's the question. Knowing what we know, which is that this battle is heading into the summer and fall camp, because it's certainly not it won't be. over at this point. Knowing what we know, how much do you think Ryan Day puts Will Howard and Devin Brown out there on Saturday as opposed to letting Lincoln Keenholz, Julian Sand, and Aaron Nolan just basically run the day? I think you get a Because see- I think you could put those guys in a bad position if – one of them has a Justin Fields type spring day. Yeah, and you have to have a, a structured big game hunt where you put the deer on the leash and you walk them out there and shoot them with a pistol because you're four for 13, three for 13 going into the final drive. So, and you have to put them up on, hey, Bradley, come on. You want to play some corner to Ohio State? Ben Victor, <laughs> get out there. Double move. Go get him. You know, like yeah, I had some scout team days in my freshman that's year. That's basically yeah. what it was. That it was, was Jake Seibert playing corner. <laughs> yeah. No, Seibert would, he would have at least got deep. I mean, they, they double moved him and they got him. I mean, that's went so, right by him. So how much how, how do you much see a series, goes into this? Like one or series. two series each, and then you're done? I don't and think you'll see him a lot. No pass, like one or two passes. Script for success, get him a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can see the young guys and let them go. I think the unfortunate part of that would be that it reinforces the idea that the spring game no longer matters at all. If you have a transfer quarterback coming in who is at the end of his first spring in his 15th practice with the program, and you're like, you know what? He doesn't need any of those reps with this offensive line or those wide receivers or running the offense, and he's only out there for two drives. What? Like, why are we doing any of it? Like that? There's got to be some. Are you content, baby? Content. Are you not entertained? I mean, did the the Romans need to drag those slaves in there to fight tigers and other humans? No, you did it for entertainment. Well, Eh. okay, can't argue that. I I don't know that there's a counter argument to that. Bold strategy, Cotton, but. It is one of 15, right? Aren't we supposed to be treating it seriously? Why would you not just let these these quarterbacks who are battling actually go out there and do it? I don't understand. Maybe they will. I don't, I don't think they I mean, will. I, I just Brad's think telling me they won't. You're telling me they won't. I just don't feel... History would tell you that they wouldn't. <laughs> history I, repeats itself. I just don't... The, hopefully the good thing. Yeah. not the bad. You got you to learn from it. I think part of it's injury, but the younger guys... Will, Will Howard has played a lot. Devin Brown has taken a lot of reps. Those young guys, this is all the reps that they've had. And so if you think there's any realistic shot for them playing, those reps are far more valuable to them because they're a greater percentage of their selection set than it is for Will Howard, who's played for 14 years, won a Big 12 championship, done a lot of things. All right. But is there any element? You're right, Bob. Thank you. Is there, is there any element of Ryan Day because, as you mentioned, portal season begins on Monday – that he needs to be able to go say, I think we all know, we've seen, if Justin Fields couldn't definitively be named the starter coming out of a spring camp, that like really nobody So you're talking about bringing to. in another quarterback? No, what I'm talking about is making a depth chart, giving an evaluation so that all of them can make plans moving forward if they feel like they need to. If someone goes in the portal strictly because of what happened in the spring game... No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying okay. because of... I, I'm talking about the totality well, of camp. Okay. So here's the thing. That, that, by, late, if, if, that if, by Saturday, that he's got to say something to these guys to be fair if, to them and so that the portal then doesn't dictate to him who his quarterback is. If Will Howard is definitively the starter, I think the only person that it really impacts on a high level is Devin Brown. Lincoln's played one season. The other two guys haven't played at all. So they're not looking at It's not like Will Howard's got eight years of eligibility left. This is it. I mean, this is all he has left. So if you're behind him, like, okay, I'm going to have a couple years to be able to play. He's gone. Yeah. So I, I don't think that they would look at this like, oh, gosh, like Will Howard is the starter. Like Devin probably looks at it like, okay, well, that's another year for me. And so he would be the one you have the conversation with. But, but I also think the same thing is true. If we're talking about this new era of college football, if Devin Brown – has and he's had a very good spring based on what he's we have seen. Well. If if Ryan Day thinks that he could beat out Will Howard, Will Howard then has a different decision to make because he can he has the ability to leave. There's no restriction on the amount of times you can transfer anymore. That's insane. I mean, and, and I know that, it's insane, but that's the reality. Did did Will not tweet out the burn the ships too? He did not. He's not on the, the ship burn. I don't think he's tweeting at all. 
But that's why I feel like it's quite a conundrum. Yeah, it, it, I know that Ryan Day wants to carry you, over you, from you, practice fifteen to sixteen. I've heard him say that a million but you times. You can't be held hostage by emotion. You can't sit there. Any Dude. coach would sit there and be able to tell you definitively after the spring game in a situation like this, this is what it's going to look like, and this is w- what it will most likely be at the end of summer camp. Mm-hmm. I, I would say it's disingenuous. I don't know if you can say that based upon where you think guys can move. And like, hey, sure. I mean, now if Devin feels like I haven't, and here's the guys have eyes. They see the film. They all watch it together. They know what one guy looks like, and they know what they look like. And so if Devin's like, man, there's a big gap here between me and Will, or Will's like, gosh, these other – Devin's right on my heels. Maybe one of the young guys could beat me out. And he goes to Ryan, hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. You know, I'm on my way out. I mean, that they all have eyes. They can see. They're okay. watching the same picture. Okay. So, you're right, Bob. It's, it's the Bryant heating and cooling systems we can kick off show. Yeah, it is. Uh, that means we have to have normally a hot take. We always do our hottest take. We're not going to make bold predictions. No, but, but a hottest take. Look, I think Ohio State is going to win. Your hottest take was shaking like... Uh, uh, tail Michael, feather. No, I thought it was Michael J. Fox. You should have gone with. I can't believe like a tail. you said that, Bob. That's what you. That. <laughs> um, you so, could have. You should have gone with Nelly and Murphy Lee. Eh. Uh, well, Sometimes, maybe not. There's somebody else look, on that remix. We want to talk not about. Not him. every. Not every Did swing he? is a home run. Okay. Not every swing is a home run. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sometimes you just fall one off, and I fell that one off. <laughs> I think it was a swing in a miss. It, it may have been a triple. Though. I feel bad about it. I love it Michael J. Fox. Do you know when I was in uh, elementary school, my nickname was Alex P. Keaton. Because I used to wear shirt and tie to elementary school, because I just I just think it's proper. <laughs> to uh, elementary school, what is wrong yeah. with you? Just grew up that way, man. Where did you? Go I've to never even school? seen him wear a tie since then. That's not true. The whole time we worked together, well, that's true. I've never seen him shave since then. Yeah, well, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to just like to get little, little, little iced up. Now you were all right. So you were trying shave. to keep me on track for the show. So here's the thing. <laughs> Are we doing like hottest take? It's hottest take for this for the spring as a whole. I think Brad has to start. He hasn't been on the show before. He That's didn't know exactly he had to do why that. He has to start. <laughs> there's because a there's a new number forty two making his Ohio Stadium debut. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, uh, you guys were both forty two. Yeah. Look at that. What a sweet. sweet yeah. What a sweet. Sweet. Uh, sick, another Aussie. So I think that'll be an interesting thing to see how he handles it. Okay. Um, I mean, there's another Aussie coming in the summer. So from what I've heard, there'll be a battle all summer long in camp. So it'll be interesting to see. But you know, as a wear of forty two, it'll be cool to see another one taking his first uh, snaps, whether it's a spring game or a real game. Wow. Aussie, you're, you're, Aussie position battles, I, I've heard, are to the death. That is. That's so what, what they do. In what the is your, what's your hottest take about how that Aussie battle is going to be resolved? There might be a new best 42 in the stadium. Oh. Oh, my goodness. What a legacy. It's Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's, that's a not knowledge. a punt. That's a punt. <laughs> that's a punt. Berm, what, what were you cooking up over there? I don't know. I was waiting for you guys to go so I could think cherry pick one. Uh, cherry pick one. No. Hot take? Hot take. The player of the game, we are going to bring it back. This is what we call Bam a callback, people. Uh, CJ Hicks is going to be the player of the game on Saturday. And we're not making bold peas here, but I think you're going to see a couple like really dynamite, explosive plays out of CJ Hicks on defense. Maybe a maybe a pick six here. Maybe, oh. a, maybe a fumble recovery for who's touchdown. He, who's he picking off? Doesn't matter. They're all going to throw the quarterback. If somebody fumbles in a thudded up practice, we're going to have a different That's conversation. Another, <laughs> that is another issue. I mean, there's, They'll take a lap. There's, if you fumble in a thud up, Ryan, <laughs> you're gonna have, Ryan will give them the You're going to have quarterbacks who've barely played with running backs who've never played. I mean, there, there's a they chance. practice for, together. You, <laughs> practice is different. You're not in front of 90,000 people at Ohio Stadium. You're going to have Lincoln Keenholz or or Julian Sane or Aaron Nolan handing it off to Sam Williams Dixon in the on the horseshoe what on the Saturday. Sam Williams Dixon? Yeah, at twelve thirty five p.m. Is that the kick that time? ball's on the turf? We're already we're already those guys at twelve thirty five. Probably, yeah. That ball's on the turf, bud. <laughs> it's a Fox start. We're not kicking until twelve oh, twelve oh, oh, That's oh right. My gosh, I forgot. It is delayed. There's so many times. Oh my gosh! Look outs. at that play. So many commercials. Oh no. Gus Johnson. The no. energy. The energy will be there. Hicks no. fix, ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> you know my my. I'm, sorry. Absolutely I'm right really sorry about that. Everyone. Mine, I think I think you're on the right track. I don't think CJ Hicks will play enough to make an impactful opportunity like that. Oh, so you're gonna say Arvell Reese instead? I'm gonna go with Velly. Ooh, yeah, you you picked the wrong one. You were in the right <laughs> stack. You just chose the wrong one, sir. Because Arvell Reese is going to play a lot. Yeah, Arvell Reese is going to make some people have a very 
memorable 100%. day on Saturday. And so that's why I'm going to volume shoot. I'm going with the guy who's getting a lot of reps. <laughs> okay, you picked what you did is in a uh, fantasy uh, fantasy draft for the NCAA tournament. You picked the guy on the 11 seed, high score, who's going to go out there, and you think he's going to give you 40 in one game that will offset him only making playing one round, maybe two. I'm going to go with the guy who's going to play a ton of games. He's getting a lot of reps. He's going to get a lot of reps against guys who aren't as good as him because yep. he's going to still be out there at the end. He's just a better he was, athlete. He was doing that on student appreciation <laughs> yeah. day. Yes. Like, you're blitzing Arvell Reese and C.J. Hicks against, like, backups. Like, it's this, over. Sorry. That's this, a wrap. This hurts so, because I've been, like, more team yeah. Arvell Reese yeah. in the last six you're weeks. You're causing him real discomfort. All, all of a sudden, you switch to the <laughs> wrong team, Berm. <laughs> I just figured C.J. has Kinda a – Kind of like – CJ, what did, what did you do over there? I didn't he do it. Uh, CJ has an ability to be around the football, and I think the football will be loosey goosey on Saturday. If they fumble in a thud, <laughs> why? Why are you so concerned about fumbles on Saturday? Why aren't you? <laughs> why aren't you? Because that would be highly concerning. That's a bigger question, boy. Why aren't you? You heard? You heard? Uh, Carlos Lachlan? Lock, Lock, Lachlan. Lachlan. No soft batch cookies. Your fumble, he might honestly. Have you seen him? Oh, by the way, he's gonna explode. Yeah, he might yeah. rip their helmet off and beat them with it. Did you? This is what we used to somebody, do back in Memphis. Somebody the asked us, unit, the drug unit. Somebody asked us last week if he had to bring his own tailor in him, in with him to make his shirt so his traps would fit in there. You, he, just, you just heard Schlegs when saying that, though. By the way, he's been saying that. No, Schlegs would that if you oh, said Trapasaurus. Trapasaurus, yeah. Like trap I, I've Schlegs. heard him say Trapasaurus a number of times. That's why this guy has got him. He's I mean, big. So you ultimately are the one who piggybacked the hottest take here. By I was going to say Arvell Reese the whole time. I gave you, you had the chance to steal the deal, and you just let it sit there. The door was open, and you did not walk through. All right, Austin, it's your turn. I believe that Jermaine Matthews is going to be the star on Saturday, and that I think he's eventually going to be the star. Starting cornerback opposite Denzel Burke ahead of Davis and Igbenosin. Really? I be be here. I believe that. That's a good hot take. Yeah, I really, really, and I. This is not. I've said this to Burn before. It is not that I don't think Davis and Igbenosin is a very good player because I do. Uh, there were some things that he had to work out in his game. He Bob had a little bit of shrinkability when it came to the penalties and aggressiveness oh, and physicality is 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 great. But I think. Jermaine Matthews does that under a little bit more control, and I think that his ceiling is ultimately higher. Uh, so he's going to have opportunities. The football is always thrown a lot in a spring game. I think Jermaine Matthews is going to be in prime position to make a handful of plays. That does. It's not what happened Saturday that I think means that he's going to pass him in the fall. I think the body of work and the just super high potential, eventually he becomes that number two. All are, three are, are going to play. Are you talking about... The original super freak, Rick James? I, I'm not talking about him, but okay. we can if you want to. Well, I mean, that's for the natural. <laughs> if we have if you're the, talking about a playmaker like that, Rick James, it, he's, three is not a crowd, sir. Jermaine Matthews at, at the one-day recruiting camp in June of 2022, June 1st, 2022, not offered by Ohio State, was going to skip camp because he said, I don't, I don't think I should have to camp and get an offer. Decided, like, last minute to go camp. Showed up, started yelling at the coaches every time he made a play. Offer me, offer me. See, that's, and, he's got a little Malcolm Jenkins in him. And they did. Is, and, and, they did. <laughs> and they did. He earned it. Where's he? He's from Cincinnati? Yeah, Wenton Woods, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, yes. I like <laughs> Wenton Woods, guys. There's a high degree of shank ability there. there he actually shank. plays with a shank in his sock. You don't always have to use it, but it's, no, it's nice there. to know it's there. <laughs> it's comforting. It's comforting. Uh, I had so much fun. I hope we get to bring this back again. We are we're going to be doing weekend kickoff in the fall for sure. Maybe the fairway Columbus will bring us back. I hope so. We got a, ni- a nice handful of people out here tonight. The food is great. Uh, the people are even better. Appreciate Bobby Carpenter and Golf Bradley is good. Robinson. Golf is the best. Uh, and enjoy the Masters this weekend. And more importantly, Ohio State Spring Game Saturday noon on Fox. That guy down there is Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. This is Weekend Kickoff. It's brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems. Enjoy the game on Saturday. We'll see you next time.